let's get to um, what you did in this case. So what did I ask you to do in this case? Uh, basically, you asked me to evaluate Dr. Baim's biomechanical engineering analysis to see if it was accurate and correct. And what material did you review? I think you already mentioned you read his transcript and you watched his trial testimony. Is that I right? Did. I did, yes. And maybe for the jury, in case they need a reminder, he had that green screen in the back of him. Right, just the talking head. Exactly. He's speaking from Florida, I think. That's right. All right. And so let's uh, just start with his analysis. Do you agree with it? I do not. I do and, not agree with his analysis. And maybe uh, before we explain why, just give us a sense of what you, what you understand his method and analysis to be. Sure. Um, as I've gone through what he testified to in his deposition, in the trial, looking at his calculations and what he's done, to me, there's two parts to his analysis. The first is calculations to show that Miss Paltrow had to land on Mr. Sanderson in order to get the rib fractures that he got. And then there was a second part that basically said, um, because Miss Paltrow had to land on Miss Mr. Sanderson, that could only happen with Miss Paltrow hitting him from behind. It couldn't happen any other way. It was impossible. So. That's my understanding of the, the kind of the two parts, the main parts. Thank you. We'll go in those, go over those in more detail. As you looked at his analysis, you read everything that he read, correct? I did. And did you read even more than that? Uh, I had additional depositions. That's correct. Of the various people that were at the scene of the accident. That's right. Um, so. Let's get one thing out of the way. Do, do you agree with Dr. Bain that Mr. Sanderson's rib fractures did not occur during the initial skier to skier contact? Yes, I, I think that that's correct. There's no disagreement at this point, at least from the testimony I've heard. Um, the skier skier portion where they first contact, no matter which version we have, um, did not create the rib fractures. I don't think anyone thinks that at this point. So that's good. We, we agree. And. Um, In terms of uh, just a, a quick overview before we go into uh, his calculations, which you can explain to the jury, do you believe that uh, Ms. Paltrow's account, and, and I should say, are you familiar with her account? I am. And you heard her trial testimony? I did. And read her deposition. And yes. do, you, do you believe her account of the collision uh, is consistent with what you know about biomechanical engineering? Object. Goes beyond the scope of this expert witness. That calls for the evaluation. Uh, goes your testimony. Would, would you please approach the bench? <clears throat> okay, so let's go back to that question. I was asking you, in your opinion, is Miss Paltrow's account consistent with what you know about biomechanical engineering? Yes, it is. And maybe another way to put that um, is: is it consistent with the laws of physics? It's the same question. Yes. Yeah, and exactly. Dr. Bame, the jury heard, talked a lot about Newton's laws and the laws of physics, applying those to the evidence in this case. And again, in your analysis, as you apply them, Ms. Paltrow's um, uh, account is consistent with those. Objection, Lex Foundation. Overruled? That's correct. Her, Ms. Paltrow's version, her, her scenario is consistent with the laws of physics and what we know about biomechanics. And then the, the account that Dr. Bain gave and that is uh, based on Mr. Ramon's account, um, is that consistent with the laws of physics? I do not believe it is, and I can explain as we get into it. Yes. Okay, great. We'll, we'll explain that. Let's, let's um, go to Dr. Bain's calculations so you can explain to the jury um, your analysis of those. I'm, we, can, we have an easel, and as I understand it, you, you would like to kind of draw so that you can show them what the equations mean. Is that correct? That's exactly right. Okay, so I'll grab the easel, and then... If you do the calculations with the correct equations and only his mass, you get over 4,000 newtons when he lands, actually. You get 11,056 newtons. So if he were to fall to the snow, 
using Dr. Baim's calculation method the correct way, then just Mr. Sanderson falling, not Ms. Paltrow involved at all, he could get rib fractures. This is not quite correct overall. Normally we use what's called effective mass, so all of Mr. Sanderson's mass wouldn't go through his chest. Maybe there'd be some force on his legs. If he hit his head, some force on his head. We typically would say maybe 50% of his mass would be appropriate for effective mass. So instead of the 80 kilograms, we would do, and actually I should put over here, this winds up being 11,000 newtons. And if we do the 40 kilograms instead for Mr. Sanderson, so, um, and that's, uh, and we use the correct equation, we get Sorry, I don't do the math in my head. Um, 5,000, 500 newtons, uh, approximately. What this means is Mr. Sanderson can fall to the ground without Ms. Paltrow landing on him and sustain the rib fractures according to Dr. Baim's calculation method. So if done correctly, he cannot say his opinion that Ms. Paltrow had to land on Mr. Sanderson to get the rib fractures, which means that this goes through the rest of his analysis. So the rest of his analysis is wrong. So this is really critical, that one half that, that he did for the velocity, the, the wrong velocity, really threw the rest of his analysis into question. So Dr. Sure, there's a lot more we could say about the calculations, I'm sure, and you would, you would approach it differently than he did, correct? That, that's correct. But Given the way he did it, if he did it correctly, you're saying that the, um, the the conclusions that he came to are inconsistent with his opinion. That's correct. Yes, okay. Exactly. exactly. Okay. So, um, yeah. Sure. Okay, doctor. Let's talk about. Um, let's talk about skier skier collisions. You've, as you explained earlier, done some research to understand what forces are like on the ski slope. Um, so um, in this case, how, how would you apply what you know about physics to understand the, the claims about the ski collision? Uh, sure, I would apply Newton's laws to um, the contacts, the different versions of the events, and see um, what makes sense, how it would unfold, do the physics of the contact that's being uh, testified to make sense? Is it self-consistent? Mm 